Let's go back to our top story now, and that is the assassination of Afghanistan's chief peace negotiator by a Taliban suicide bomber. Our North America correspondent Craig McMurtry joins us now from Washington. Craig, good morning. As we've seen, news of that killing came just as Presidents Karzai and Obama were meeting in New York. Yes, absolutely. Good morning, Michael. Uh, the U.S. president and his Afghanistan counterpart were indeed uh, meeting in New York. It's part, of course, of the U.N. General Assembly that is about to get underway. Um, U.S. officials have expressed their shock and uh, sadness, of course, at the assassination. Barack Obama called it a tragic loss and called for the end to the senseless cycle of violence in Afghanistan. President Karzai has cut short his visit here and will be heading home. U.S. officials and briefing reporters have been at pains, though, to say that their general policy in Afghanistan is unchanged uh, and uh, the talks between the two presidents centred on the transition of security arrangements so they're trying to project an image of business as usual but it's clear that, uh, that this death has come as a real blow. A real blow to the peace process indeed. Now it's looking fairly grim in Afghanistan and it's looking pretty grim for the world economy. The IMF has released that particularly bleak report overnight. It has. It's the world economic outlook. We get it every time at around this time of the year when the IMF and World Bank have their meetings and all the finance ministers or many of them in the world come to Washington, D.C. to compare notes on the global economy. This is a very pessimistic report. It uh, warns of significant downside risk. They've really ratcheted down their expectations for the global economy since we last heard from the IMF uh, economy team. Uh, they are warning uh, also of the threat of the global economy sliding into a new recession Session, particularly centred on problems in the Eurozone, the sovereign debt crisis, of course, and over the slow US economy. To get to some of the specifics, uh, they are talking about the global economy entering a dangerous new phase, a weak and bumpy uh, expansion prospects, particularly for advanced economies. They're projecting global growth of roughly 4% through 2012, but of the advanced economies, only 1.5% this year. 2% in 2012. And again, it comes down to the Eurozone and what's going on in the US. Also, to an extent, Japan still coming back from the earthquake and tsunami. Now, they really are also at pains here to say that these projections that I've just mentioned to you are, are really, in a sense, a best case scenario. On the US, in their commentary, uh, they're warning of uh, sluggish recovery prospects for, for the US economy. Uh, they say in their notes, activity in the United States already soft softening might suffer further blows, uh, for example, from the political impasse over fiscal consolidation, a weak housing market, rapid increases in household saving rates or deteriorating financial conditions. On the Eurozone, um, the IMF economists are saying that policymakers in Europe are one step behind the action. Europe, according to the IMF's chief economist Oliver Blanchard, must get its act together. So it's a pretty bleak outlook for the global economy. And for Australia, some relatively good words from the IMF overnight. Yes. Now, the, the, the headline, I guess, in terms of growth prospects for Australia uh, is equally negative. They've slashed our growth prospects. They're saying the, they expect the Australian economy to grow at about 1.8 per cent. That's down from their previous projection of 3 per cent for 2011. For 2012, they're projecting 3.3 per cent. That's down from 3.5 uh, per cent earlier. However, in their uh, commentary, they're pretty uh, complimentary about Australia. They say, quote, the planned return to surplus by 2012-13 is welcome. It will increase fiscal room and take pressure off monetary policy and the exchange rate. So certainly uh, the picture for Australia is a little more cheery than it is for most of the advanced economies. But overall, of course, if uh, the global economy slides uh, back into recession, particularly the Eurozone and the US, that economic turbulence will certainly be felt in Australia as well. Well, that would certainly cheer Treasurer Wayne Swan and Craig. He's uh, pretty chuffed about something else this morning as well. Yeah, the Euro Money magazine has essentially made him Treasurer uh, of the Year. Apparently the last time this award was handed out to an Australian minister was Paul Keating. Uh, and the, uh, it, there's going to be a glittering ceremony here in D.C. on Sunday evening where uh, the Treasurer will be presented with this. Uh, and the, the, uh, the, the commentary that Euro Money offers is, uh, is highly uh, complimentary. Uh, it is essentially saying that uh, Mr Swan receives the award for careful stewardship of Australia's finances and economic economic performance. Uh, it goes on to say throughout that time Australia has not only avoided falling into recession but has been the best performing of the world's developed market economies. So some good news uh, for the Gillard government. And they'll take any good news they can get at the moment. Craig McMurtry in Washington, thank you.